Good morning. Welcome to worship on this Pentecost Sunday at Trinity Presbyterian Church. It's so good to see each of you on this holiday weekend here in the sanctuary, as well as those of you who are joining us online on the Facebook live stream. Friends, let us worship God together. rise in body or in spirit and join me in our call to worship which is printed in your bulletin let us gather in the steadfast love of God how remarkable how magnificent how wondrous is love so abundant let us take refuge in the shadow of love's wings like a tender parent God invites us into their embrace let us give thanks, for God rejoices over us. In, in this collective of individuals, each unique and beloved, we too delight. Please join me in the opening hymn, number 290, O Day of Joy and Wonder.
may be seated. Friends, God's Spirit has gathered us all here for worship. Let us confess our sins and return to God. Please join me in the unison prayer for forgiveness, which is printed in your bulletin. Spirit of God, we hesitate and doubt. You call us to act boldly, but our fear keeps us from your call. Forgive our lack of courage. Embolden us to dream big and trust the Spirit to fill and use us. Help us to be Christ's church without hesitation. Guided by your Holy Spirit, help us usher in your kingdom come. Amen. In the story of Pentecost in the book of Acts, the scripture reads, everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Friends, in Jesus Christ, we are indeed forgiven and freed to new life. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you. Let us share signs of peace with one another. Please join me in the hymn of gathering number 291, Spirit, Spirit of Gentleness.
Okay, y'all. Do y'all actually want to stand for this morning's children's time? You're gonna have to. You're gonna want to see into this. Um, so we're gonna pour. Do y'all know what this is? Do you know what it's used for? Do you know what goes in here? Hmm? No. What do you? Come on. What is this? It's gonna go into here. Water. So these are the baptismal waters. Um, so I haven't been here long enough to remember when y'all were babies, but there are people in here who remember when you were babies. Um, and here at Trinity, when we use this baptismal font, that's this called, and we use this water. Um, we had one earlier last year, I think all of y'all were here for it, where I held a baby and we put water on the baby's head and the congregation made promises about taking care of the baby and teaching the baby about Jesus. Well, that happened for y'all too. It happened for me when I was a baby in a different church somewhere else. It happened for lots of folks out here. And so we do this with babies. And babies can't talk, right? Yeah, and babies don't really know. I mean, they kind of know, I get, about Jesus and God because they're alive. But they don't really know as much as we're starting to know when we're growing up and going to Sunday school and such. And so when babies are baptized, the parents and the adults in the room and y'all, we all say, yes, this child belongs here, this child belongs to God, this child is loved. And so in some churches that always baptize adults, the adults will say it themselves. They'll say, I love Jesus. Um, And we don't do that as often since we baptize babies. So one of our responses to that, which comes from ancient days of the church, is going to happen later today, and I'm actually going to, y'all are going to go back with Miss Rosie and Miss Martha and Miss Tina, but I'm going to have y'all come back for what we call the confirmation. Lucy and Vivian will raise their hands. Do you see, do you see, yeah, I'll let you touch the water in a minute. Do you see Lucy and Vivian raising their hands? Okay, Lucy and Vivian have spent almost the last year, every Sunday morning with me and Mr. Joe Ray and Miss Nancy, learning about Jesus and the Bible and the church and about themselves and what what that means for them. And so later today, we are going to hear them make these promises of how much they love Jesus and how much Jesus loves them. And they will be reminded, even though they don't remember, when we put some, can I put some water on your head? Is that okay? They don't remember that. Can I need some water? There you go. So they don't, you can touch the water too. It's not, it's just regular water. Go ahead, there you go. Um, Even though they don't quite remember when somebody sprinkled water on their head and when their family came around and said, yes, we love this child, today is a good day to remember that promise and to continue on in their journey together. Um, And so you're gonna see some interesting things. You're gonna see me remind them, touch kind of like I did y'all on their heads to remind them of their baptism. You're gonna see a lot of um, grown-ups come forward and lay their hands on their shoulders while we pray, just like that, which comes from the Bible even before Jesus was born. So thousands of years ago, we've been doing what we call these rituals with this water and with laying on hands. So when y'all come back, just look out for it. Some of it might seem kind of strange, but just be curious about it and watch it go, watch it happen and watch these young people um, make agreements to be a part of this church and to continue their journey together. Wonderful. Will you all pray with me? You can repeat after me. Dear God, thank you for loving us when we are babies, when we are teenagers, and adults and grown ups, and in every day of our lives. Amen. Thanks, y'all. This morning, our prayer for illumination will be sung. So I invite you to open your hymnals to number 284, Holy Spirit, come to us. We will sing it three times through.
Our first reading this morning comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 3b through 13. Listen to the word of God. <clears throat> no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them and everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, and to another the utterance of knowledge according to that same Spirit. To another faith by the same Spirit. To another gifts of healing by the one Spirit. To another the working of powerful deeds. To another prophecy. To another the discernment of spirits to another various kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of those tongues. All these are activated by one and the same Spirit, who allots to each one individually just as the Spirit chooses. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one spirit we are all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of one spirit.
Our second reading is from the Gospel of John, chapter 20, verses 19 through 23. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week after Jesus died and was resurrected, and the doors were locked where the disciples were for fear of the religious leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As my Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said thus, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Poet and gardener Camille Dungy is one of many who have put great work into turning her manicured lawn into what is called a pollinator garden, a type of garden designed with the intent of growing specific plants that will attract insects that are pollinators, many of which are at risk of extinction throughout our world. Earlier this month, NPR did a short segment on Dungy and her garden. In her backyard, she has created what she terms her prairie project, which is filled with native grasses and perennials which will flower later this spring. At the time of the interview and her prairie were tall, dried grasses, which she says she has left standing from last season with dead stalks from her milkweed and sunflowers. Dungy explained to NPR that a lot of the native pollinators will nest or plant their eggs under and around these dead native plants. Mark Wessel of the Toronto Sun writes that somewhere between 75 and 95 percent of the world's flowering plants rely on these pollinators. Furthermore, the pollinators aid in the production of one out of every three bites of food consumed by us. During the interview in her garden, Dungy and the journalist from NPR spotted a cottontail rabbit nibbling on her plants, almost as if cued by the interview. She noted that the garden has attracted so much variety of life in her backyard and neighborhood, from bees and butterflies, to goldfinches, nuthatches, and chickadees, and to that little rabbit enjoying its own slice of heaven. Gardeners and landscapers who are creating these pollinator gardens are also offering a counter vision of how nature can thrive. Their wild and colorful gardens rival the often preferred, especially by homeowners associations, homogenous clean cut lawns of grass. Their activism through their gardening might teach us a lesson about variety and diversity. When you allow creation to do more of its own thing, new life can be breathed into the atmosphere, whether that's through the formation of new habitats, through the abundance of colorful blooms and crops, or through the unruly conditions that allow a diversity of species to flourish. On this Pentecost Sunday, we remember the first Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit came with wind and flame, empowering the disciples to proclaim the good news of the risen Lord Jesus Christ to all people. Each year, we rejoice on this Sunday, celebrating the ways that the Spirit continues to guide our lives in this world. God's spirit is is presented in multiple settings throughout the Gospels, including this morning's reading from John as a gift given to us, especially in a world that is beyond the crucifixion and resurrection of Christ, beyond that physical presence of Christ among us. As the spirit was poured out on those disciples in in the book of Acts, we embrace this morning that we too have received the gift of God's Holy Spirit at work in us and among us today. It seems that the Holy Spirit, if she is a gift, is a gift that keeps on giving. 
It is a gift in itself to be in such proximity to the divine. But the Spirit moves even further, blessing each and every one of us with our own gifts to be used. In his letter to the Corinthians, Paul instructs them very clearly on these gifts. Throughout the church of Corinth, there are a wide variety of gifts and talents and activities and things to offer to the mission and ministry of their church. And every single one of these gifts, Paul argues, is crucial to the community. Even though there is a grand diversity in these gifts, they are spiritual gifts coming from the one same Holy Spirit. In schools, the words gifted and talented have long been used to separate intellectually sharp students from others to the point of pulling them out of classes for special enrichment or even putting them in completely different classes altogether. Having been a product of these programs growing up, I can say I benefited from them, but I am grateful that as Christians here, we grasp onto a different definition of what it means to be gifted. In this Christian philosophy of a gifted program, all are gifted. Among us are many different talents and skills and specialties. And every single one of these gifts, not just those in an exclusive category or those coming from specific kinds of people, all of these gifts are needed within the community. Without a culture in which these different and varying gifts are embraced, we are susceptible to a dull, almost half alive life together, making it much harder for us to follow in God's footsteps and co-creating a better world. Based on the context of Paul's letter to the Corinthians, many commentators propose that this discussion was happening as a result of certain gifts, especially the gift of speaking in and interpreting tongues. These gifts were being exalted higher than the gifts, perhaps the the ones that are less prominent or less public. They are being exalted higher than these gifts that others in the community have. Although we might identify different abilities among us today than the ones that Paul lists, we are just as capable of falling into the same trap, the trap of lifting up or idealizing the gift of one person and ignoring or diminishing the gift of another. For example, worship here is such a public act that it's easy to understand how those among us with gifts that contribute to worship through song and word are quickly recognizable. While those among us who are gifted at creating hospitable spaces in our fellowship hall or balancing a budget each year are easy to slip off our radar of recognition. If we aren't paying attention, we can swiftly slip into living our communal life like a homogenous, evenly trimmed lawn. And it's easy to do so and not realize it, because even if the landscape might seem dull to some, the lawn is green, and you can argue that. The lawn is green, it's showing some sign of life. It's pleasant to drive by and look at, or to stand with a hose in your hand and water it, admiring your work. But the question for us to ask is, is it really what God intended for us as a community? Does God want us to keep doing the same thing each week, hearing the same lesson, learning in just one particular manner because that has been the norm? Or does God call us to a more vibrant, perhaps even unruly, unmanageable times and at times way of being a community? Pollinator gardens are fairly contextual relying heavily upon native species blooming, depending on where they are in the world. And so are congregations. In some ways, I think Trinity is already ahead of the game and becoming a plot of land with the diversity of skills that are nurtured and cared for. And I wonder what it would be like for Trinity to continue to transform into its own little pollinator garden here in Starkville. I wonder what creatures might be revived and what new organisms might arrive in this place as their new habitat. 
I wonder what new colors and textures and smells we might discover or realize that we'd forgotten about. I wonder what songs the birds will sing and the insects will chirp and just think of how nutrient-rich the soil could be. I wonder if we loosened our grips on the urge to do everything decently and in order. What if we loosened our grips and tried cultivating for something we've never tried before? I wonder what could happen to this Trinity garden. May we follow the Spirit in that journey and listen to all of our gifts. All glory be to the Creator, the Redeemer, and the Sustainer. Amen. I invite you to rise in body or in spirit as we together affirm our faith using words, the words of the Nicene Creed, which is printed in your bulletin. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again again to glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. updates to our church prayer list. Um, Reverend Deb DeBoer, who preached for y'all last Sunday, um, had a fall during the week and ended up needing um, hip surgery. Um, and so she's out of surgery and I think is still recovering in the hospital room, I believe. Um, and so prayers for Deb and that she catches a break. Um, Vicki Schramm, uh, is feeling unwell today. She was supposed to, she was going to be our liturgist. I just wanted y'all to know she's fine, but she's not feeling well, so she's at home. Um, and then Katie Foster has kept us updated on her vocal cords journey and um, was awaiting a date in August and has um, been kind of moved up in the schedule and we'll see somebody this week to hopefully get an earlier, um, earlier procedure date. So um, prayers of endurance for you as well as celebration um, that hopefully things will speed along. Are there any other updates or additions to our prayer list? We thank God that Elizabeth is here. Yes. Thankful for Elizabeth and her health. Thank you to all of y'all who pitched in last week to make worship happen. All right, let us go to God and prayer. God who gathers us on this Pentecost Sunday Grant us the courage of a planted seed, poised for growth, 
ready to burst from the dark, rich soil of word and worship. May the timing of our growth coincide with your created order as we enter summertime. May we bloom in righteousness as the sun rises high and the crops grow tall. On this last Monday of May, as we give thanks for those who made sacrifices and service to our country, we do so soberly and with a deep appreciation for all who choose to limit their personal freedom in order to further the common good. We give thanks for those who exercised duty and courage despite the great cost to themselves and their loved ones. And we pray that we who enjoy the benefits of sacrifice will honor their memory by doing our part to work for a country where God's abundant life for all is self-evident and sacred. Peaceful spirit in this season of war and violence, as bomb, bombs fall and assault rifles are used to gun down the innocent and refugees flee their homes in search of safe haven, save us from evil and free us from our addiction to violence and weapons of destruction. Bend the arc of the universe towards justice. Inspire us with courage to resist the evil of racism, to proclaim your inclusive, abundant love, to root out the enemies of righteousness, and to persist for your peace. Spirit of wisdom and understanding, as you gather diverse peoples on Pentecost, embolden us with a Christian hospitality that welcomes and receives all. Open our hearts to empathy and understanding of the circumstances of others. Empower us with your radical love that can strengthen and save. May we, your people, call on you with one voice as one body, giving thanks and praise for your promise of redemption. In your mercy, beloved God, hear the prayers of your people now, as the body of Christ, we pray as Christ taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, God assures us each and every created being has a contribution to make to the whole. Some are made rich in wisdom and others in compassion. Some among us tend to the buildings. Others bring nourishment by way of meals or laughter or prayer. We are not all called to bring the same offerings. We are only called to give generously from what we have. In this confidence, let us give with joy for the sake of the common good.
Let us pray. God, you have blessed each of us with gifts to serve and share. May the offerings we present today be used to further your kingdom and build your beloved community. Amen. Let us sing our hymn of response, Go to the World, number 295. Lucy and Vivian and Ron and Faye and Anne and Joe Ray and Nancy forward. I'll have you two stand here, facing the congregation next to each other. Yep, that's good, that's good. And the rest of us will stand over here too. We can, we can block the table, that's okay, we know it's here. Yeah, I'll give this to Ron first. Today, we receive two of our youth who have spent nearly every Sunday morning of the last eight months in confirmation class with Joe Ray and Nancy Underwood and me. These youth demonstrate a kind, a deep kindredness with Christ, a curious mind for learning about God, and a life lived through the Holy Spirit's boldness. They immersed themselves in scripture and the story of God's people, studied Reformed theology and Presbyterian church history, and explored the practices that bolster Christian life. They worked together to become more comfortable asking tough questions and wrestling with their faith. And beyond Sunday mornings, they've participated in special experiences like breaking the Ramadan fast with our Muslim friends and stepping up to help and worship and shepherding our youngest worshipers. Two weeks ago, Lucy and Vivian met with members of our church's session to share their personal faith statements and journeys, as well as to dialogue about what it means to be a member of this church. At the end of every semester or year of a confirmation class, 
Confirmands can elect to join Trinity at the end, or they can choose not to join at this time. This year, it is with joy and thanksgiving that we welcome Lucy Stelios Wills and Vivian Cargus's decisions to join the church. Lucy Stelios Wills and Vivian Cargus are presented Cargus by the Session for the reaff reaff Reaffirmation of the Baptismal Covenant. They now desire to profess their faith publicly to accept greater responsibility in the life of the church and God's mission to the world. We rejoice with you. We rejoice that you now desire to declare your faith and to share with us in our common ministry. In baptism, you were joined to Christ and made members of his body. In the community of the people of God, you have learned of God's purpose for you and for all creation. You have been nurtured at the table of our Lord and called to witness to the good news of Jesus Christ. I now invite Faye and Anne, the confirmation mentors for Lucy and Vivian, to introduce these two in just a few sentences. It's my pleasure to introduce to you Lucinda Catherine Stelios Wells. That's a long name to get on a check, isn't it? She's gonna, she's gonna have to pay by sale or emo or something. <laughs> Lucy is in the seventh grade and uh, is, uh, attends the new school, the partnership, and we talked about how fortunate that is for her to attend this beautiful school. Um, she, her favorite subject is what we used to call home ec, but they probably call it something like home engineering. Grow, grow, that's a good one. That's a good one too. I'm glad to know they still teach that course. That's, but that's our favorite subjects. Uh, as I was teaching her, as we were talking to her, it was obvious that she was so organized. Every subject we talked about, she, she had a tendency, she wanted to categorize it and write it down, get it on her phone. So she's, she, and she said later she, how much she just loved to learn and she wants to learn more. Uh, she wants to go into a medical field uh, at this point, we don't know if that's brain surgeon <laughs> or lab tech, but since she's so organized, takes good notes and loves to learn, she's bound to go uh, in, in a, a good way. We were going to have the joy of just watching her uh, excel. She is the only daughter of Alex and Anne Stelios Wells, and she has two uh, supportive brothers and Leander and Lyndon. Um, this, this is your family. This is your home. Welcome. Like I say on tape or TV. They got you. <laughs> <laughs> and this is the lovely Vivian Yuval Cargis. I hope I said that correctly. <laughs> And um, she has an interesting story about her middle name. I hope I get all the details right, but she told me that her dad was in Israel and there was a boatman. He was on a boat and there was a boatman. <laughs> and the name was Yuval. And he said something like, I love that name. That's a great name. Uh, my child will need to carry that name. And so we have Vivian Yuval Cargis which I love because the V-Y-K says Vic. So I think of her as Vic. <laughs> <laughs> and Vivian is one of the very best friends to my daughter, Lucy. They've been together since they were babies in preschool. Um, I have to refer to my notes. I'm not quite as good as Faye about that. Um, she has a wonderful family that, that we are also friends with, Father Dylan, siblings Cecilia and Clay, um, which makes her at times the baby, at times the oldest, and at times the middle child, <laughs> just depending on who she's with. Um, she says that her favorite subject in school is choir. She loves to sing, so look out. Our choir is always looking for new people. <laughs> um, but that her least favorite subject is math. <laughs> and one thing that really stood out as we were talking with Vivian is how helpful she is happy to always be. 
And um, she said one thing she would want the congregation to know about her is that she tries to be as helpful as she can and she likes to be a shoulder to rely on. And that is also something that she brought out about belonging with Trinity, is how everybody here seems to be a family and a, a community, and we are here for her as someone she can rely on, and that we will rely on her in turn. We will be a circle and a family that helps each other out. Thank you. Let me just check the notes to see if there's anything vitally important I forgot. Yep, that's another thing she mentioned as most meaningful in her confirmation class is that we let each other know that we are here to rely on each other. Um, she says that in the future she may like to do something in the medical field. I believe she expressed it as with brains or bodies, but not cutting up. <laughs> <laughs> so something to help people's brains or bodies. Um, she talked about her conception of the Holy Spirit and, and feeling God as a spirit, neither he nor she, neither flesh nor any particular form, but just as a spirit that cares for her and for all of us. So I'd like to introduce you, Vivian Cargis, and we're so happy that you're here. Okay, thank you. Yeah, the microphone to Joe Ray. I'll take the microphone. Hear these words from Paul to the Ephesians. How blessed is God. Long before God laid down earth's foundation, God had us in mind. He had settled on us as the focus of God's love to make the whole and holy by God's name. However, because of the sacrifice of Jesus the Messiah, we are free people, free from penalties and punishment, chalked up by all of our misdeeds. We are not barely free either. We are absolutely free. It is in Christ that we find out who we are and for what we are living. Long before we heard of Christ and got our hopes up, he had his eye on us. Part of the overall purpose he is working out for everything and everyone. Lucy and Vivian. It is in Christ that you, that you, once you heard the truth and believed this message of your salvation, found yourselves home free, signed, sealed, and delivered by the Holy Spirit. That's why when I heard of the solid truth, trust that you had in Jesus and your outpouring of love to all couldn't help stop thinking God about God for you, thanking God for you. Every time I pray, I think of you and give thanks. But I do more than thank God. I ask, ask God to make you intelligent and discerning and knowing the divine personal personality your eyes focused and clear so that you can see exactly what God is calling you to do and grasp the immensity of this glorious way of life God has for their followers. Okay. All right, Lucy and Vivian, now as if y'all come next to each other again, nah, by the baptism, it's a good part. Um, now is a time where I ask you questions, you give me answers, um, and that will be your profession of faith this morning. Lucy and Vivian, as you join in the membership and service of this congregation as active members, I ask you now, do you believe in God who creates, redeems, and sustains the world? Do you affirm Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Will you see to be Jesus' disciple and to follow his teaching and example, welcoming those on the margins, speaking out against injustice, and showing God's love wherever you are able, will you, with God's help? Will you be a faithful member of this congregation, sharing in its worship and ministry and play through your presence and your prayers, 
your study and your service, your gifts of time, talent, and treasure, and so fulfill your calling to be a disciple of Jesus Christ, will you, with God's help? And now, I have a question for the congregation. Do we, the members of Trinity Presbyterian Church, welcome Lucy and Vivian with joy into the common life of our congregation? Do we promise our friendship and prayers as we all share the hopes and labors of the church? Do we? We do. Wonderful. All right. It is customary to have ministers of word and sacrament and all ordained ruling elders in any Presbyterian church you want to um, to come forward to practice the ancient tradition of laying on of hands. So first I invite the families of Lucy and Vivian to come forward and we'll put you all a little further up here. Come over here. Come. Yeah. You need some room. Some people are going to crowd you. No, I mean, no, you're good. You can sit next to each other. Um, so the family can come forward and you can place a hand on, um, on shoulders and it'll kind of become a, a web. You'll have to kind of spread out. And now I invite any um, teaching and ruling elders who are here to come forward and join in on this laying on of hands so we can pray for them. There, there, you don't have to be on session right now. There are still some elders sitting down, but okay, okay. <laughs> Let us pray. Gracious God, by water and the Spirit, you claimed us as your own, cleansing us from sin and giving us new life. You made us members of your body, the church, calling us to be servants in the world. Renew in Vivian and Lucy the covenant you made in their baptism. Daily increase in them your gifts of grace, O God, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and devotion to the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence both now and forever. Continue the good work you have begun in them. Send them forth by the power of your spirit to love and serve you with joy and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. amen. Thanks, y'all. Vivian and Lucy, welcome to membership at Trinity. Y'all are welcome to give them a, a hug, a greeting. There'll be more time for that afterwards as well. Vivian, Lucy, I have two more things for y'all, and then, we'll, then you can. Um, so as I said, the children are going to remember our This is tied to your baptism. I mean, if you don't remember, even if I don't remember it, we all remember that we are one body together. So this is a ritual for remembering your baptism. Vivian, remember your baptism and be thankful and know that the Holy Spirit is at work within you. And Lucy, remember your baptism and be thankful and know that the Holy Spirit is in work in you. Amen. Vivian and Lucy, by professing your faith publicly, you have expressed your intention to grow in the covenant God made with you in your baptism. May the Spirit continue to strengthen and sustain you in the worship and mission of the church. Alleluia. Amen. And then we have a couple gifts for you. <laughs> the mic. I don't know. Um, hold on, I have one more. Did y'all want to say anything about what's in here? Okay, okay. Um, so I think there's crosses in there, I believe. I don't want to spoil it for you. Um, I also got you guys copies of this book, Being Presbyterian in the Bible Belt. I got it when I was in middle school. I was in Durham, North Carolina. I didn't understand what this title meant. Then I went to college in rural Appalachia, and that's when I started looking at it. Um, it will be helpful for y'all. I mean, we're all Christians, we're all serving the same God, but it is helpful in this, um, this area to, um, you'll have questions as you talk about your faith with your friends. Um, and, and you don't have to abide by what these authors say, but it might be helpful for you understanding context um, and what folks mean when they ask you certain questions um, and help you find some more grounding for your faith. Congrats, y'all. Thank you. 
All right, one more celebration. You're, you, unless you're, were you born in May? Okay, then you can sit down. Um, <laughs> if you were born in May, I invite you to come forward. May birthdays. I'm gonna start looking at the list ahead of time <laughs> and calling people to come forward. We'll use that. We'll use that, Jerry. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so every at the end of every month, we celebrate birthdays um, by um, bringing forward some food offerings for Starkville Strong Pantries, um, and those are donated in honor of the birthdays. So I invite you to say your name and your birthday. Alex Stilius Wills. May 12th. Ada, May 1st. Lauren Purdy, May 18th. Okay. Let's pray. Do you have a I'll, I'll, I'll have Nancy. Oh. She had to go. Yeah. Nancy's birthday was May the 22nd. Great. Thank you. Let us pray. Oh God, our times are in your hands. Look with favor, we pray, on your servants as they begin another year. Grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen their trust in your goodness all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Thank you, guys. Happy birthday. If you have an announcement for the congregation, I invite you to come forward. Put that in there. Um, the office will be closed tomorrow, so neither Aaliyah nor I will be there. Um, this is also the choir's last Sunday before they break for the summer, and so I wanted to make sure we gave a note of gratitude for um, the music that you all provide, the special music especially, um, and enjoy your um, summer off. Um, and if anybody, thank you. <laughs> and speaking of gifts, they could always use, we know there are more gifts in this sanctuary. Um, and then um, by the end of this week, um, this is your deadline. If you have things or you think you have things in cabinets or closets, especially in the fellowship hall, um, go through them and label them or take them home. Um, otherwise, we will find new homes of some kind that's not in those cabinets um, sometime this summer. Okay. Please rise and body. Oh, you have an announcement? Go ahead. I'm Ed Swan, and this afternoon in Columbus will be the Krieger Crawfish 10th Annual Charity Boil. This year, the beneficiary is the Golden Triangle Homeless Coalition. Bring your own chairs and booze if you want it to be that kind of Sunday. <laughs> and um, there will be various Excellent, I think, local bands, including the band I play with, the Shane Tubbs Band, and other great people. And um, our son, Alex, will be playing with us, so it'll be a father and son rhythm section, something that I am very grateful for. And so that's 1 to 5, 803 Fifth Avenue North, right in the middle of the coolest part of Columbus. <laughs> Thank you. Please rise in body or in spirit for the charge and benediction. God has gathered us here together for a purpose, a living, moving, breathing purpose that calls us to live differently, to live passionately, to live courageously. With the spirit as our guide, let us go from here, open to the wild ways of God, however and whomever she may be revealed. May it be so. Amen.